the Mac master is wrong about electric cars, and I'm going to prove it. Some of you probably saw some videos made a couple of weeks ago by a couple of YouTubers, Jeff Buys Cars and the Mac Master, where they proposed a challenge. And what they were going to do is Jeff was going to buy an old diesel from Facebook Marketplace for a couple of grand. And the Mac Master, Lee, was going to use his own electric car. Sorry, his uh, 120 grand Porsche Taycan. Which, well, should be pretty capable of long distance EV travel. Maybe not the most efficient model after all. I'm not sure a £120,000 all electric Porsche Taycan would be my first choice for long distance EV travel. There are longer range alternatives out there and stuff, but given it cost quite a lot of money, it should be fairly capable. And the challenge they put together was driving from John O'Groats to Land's End, which has been done a few times, but they thought, well, we're going to put the diesel against the EV. And this obviously was fairly popular, if a little bit futile. I mean, it's fairly obvious if you ask me that giving that challenge, a diesel car with, a, I don't know, 700, 750 mile range that obviously you can just refill the tank and barring any brakes you need to take for, you know, comfort brakes and stuff, it should be able to just go without any real challenge at all. And then obviously the EV, no matter what size battery is in it or what type of car it is, is going to have to stop the charge. So I think anybody really could predict that the EV would be slower than the diesel. And actually, I'm not going to dispute that. Uh, I think it's going to be a long time, if ever, that we'd ever see sort of true journey time parity. But I think that all depends on, as well though, how often you would stop if you were the one driving the diesel. I know some people like to say that they would drive 800 miles without stopping if they could, but I think in reality an awful lot of people would stop. They'd stop to eat, they'd stop to take comfort breaks, all that kind of stuff, which in an EV, in theory, is the time when you charge. And actually, that I think is where things come together a little bit more. But I'm not going to claim that I can beat the time in the diesel because I don't actually have a problem with that, how it was presented. What I do have a problem with though, is the way the EV was portrayed. So Lee, despite owning an EV for a couple of years and well, making quite a lot of videos about how much he hates it and how terrible it is and how nobody should buy an EV, did at least claim in this video that he was trying really hard to give an honest, appraisal of what the EV was like on a long journey. Honestly, I'm sorry, but you can put as many comments as you want, evangelists, in the comment section down below. I'm doing my very best here to prove that electric cars are the future. And I can tell you, so far, I've tried my damnedest and every charge point that I've been to has been taken up. And we, I can hear you all going, oh, Tesla, Tesla. This Tesla has been waiting as well. So that's absolute bull. But I'm not sure everything was as it seemed. So despite owning an EV for two years and being fully aware, and he even said as much in the videos that when you're on a long journey in an EV, if you're using rapid charging, the quickest way to traverse the country whilst you're doing that is to charge within the charging curve of the car. Now he talks a lot about 80% and as we know with modern EVs that's not necessarily a hard and fast rule, but the principle of that remains in that what you do is you charge while your car can charge as quick as possible using ultra rapid chargers and then you move on rather than sitting letting it crawl along to 100 percent and he knows this and he said this and yet at least twice in this video uh, and we need to get up to 100 percent so we can get on our way he charged to 100 percent and then was surprised it took quite a long time to charge his car right we're now at half past 10 uh, we're at 99 percent and so despite fully knowing how best to cut his journey time down as much as possible, he chose to charge for longer. And then there's the fact that despite making a point of saying that he planned this journey and actually really hamming up the point that it takes ages to plan a journey and you need to spend half an hour planning a journey if you're in an EV. That's what you have to do when you have an electric car. You have to spend half an hour first just planning where you're going to charge it, etc. And uh, stop off points and making sure that you don't charge past 80%. And He 
then was stopping at sites like Gloucester Services, for example. Now, okay, it's very, it's, it's close by, therefore I'm, I'm aware of it. However, I also know that it is extremely busy. It only has the couple of, I think, three GridServe upgraded Ecotricity chargers, and Westmoreland are currently in the process of installing 12 Ultra Rapids. Now, Lee admitted to this as well in his video. Uh, these are charging up here, so these are all taken. You've actually got them working here, right, on some more charge points, okay? 12 high-speed charge points that are coming. Uh, but at the moment, we've got to wait to actually get on the charger. So we've got 12, yeah, look, they've got 12 rapid new chargers coming soon. But stopping there in the first place, knowing that there's only a couple of working chargers there because they're in the process of installing 12, just doesn't make any sense. No sane driver is going to do that. It would be a little bit like being in the diesel, knowing you need to stop for fuel, but choosing to go to Costco petrol stations, which are notorious for having massive queues because the pump price is a bit lower, and then complaining that it took you ages because you were having to wait every time you needed diesel. It doesn't make any sense. I think whilst it was portrayed that he needed to use Ionity to keep the price down, and I, and I get that, if you've got a charging card with a certain provider and it's cheaper, you're going to be motivated to use that provider. But then he farted around with charge place Scotland chargers that weren't working very well and kept going to these services that only had two grid serve chargers and being surprised there was a queue, despite the fact he could have went to Ionity. He queued for ages for Ionity at Gretna, despite the fact Ionity at Carlisle's got far more chargers there, and it's only just down the road. And none of this really makes any sense. And you, you could be forgiven for wondering if there's a bit of an ulterior motive here. I think when two YouTubers come together to make content about sort of diesel versus electric, that build an audience and, and really do know how to work that audience through making content about how bad EVs are, and that's on both of those, both sides, uh, you could be forgiven for wondering if there's a bit of an ulterior motive. But I'm not going to get too drawn into that. I'm just saying that I, I disagree with the way the EV was presented, and I think it can be done better. And now, towards the end of his videos, Lee actually calls this out. I'll tell you what, put your money where your mouth is, get yourself up to John O'Groats, and do it yourself against the a petrol or a diesel car yourself and see who gets there first and sit and film it all and see whether you have a, a carefree smooth journey or not and so that's exactly what i'm going to do i'm going to put my money where my mouth is and i'm going to do it now i'm not going to do it in this Renault zoe that i'm sat in at the moment uh the the thought of spending a couple of solid days sat in this car it's not the most comfortable thing in the world. It's great for the usage that it gets. It's good for me just nipping back and forth to work and stuff. But the thought of what will end up being, you know, it's, it's an 880 mile journey from John O'Groats to Land's End. But actually, in reality, by the time I get to John O'Groats and then come down again and then come back to Gloucester, it's a lot more than that. So what I'm doing is I'm renting a Polestar 2 from Hertz. Uh, I'm going to pick it up later today. By the time you see this video, I will be way on my way. I'll probably already be in John O'Groats by the time you see this video. But then I'm going to drive that Polestar 2 from John O'Groats to Land's End. We're going to film it every step of the way. And I'm going to demonstrate to you exactly what it's like. And I'm going to give you an honest, true account of what it's like to do long distance EV travel in the UK today. Now, I know people don't drive from John O'Groats to Land's End every day. And therefore, a lot of people say, well, that's not really a real test, is it? Nobody needs to do that. But the point is, you test out the charging network all over the country and you can provide a fair representation of it. People say, oh, you're going to plan your trip with military precision. You're going to spend ages working out every charging stop and all that. But I'm not going to do that. Yes, I'm going to plan my trip. I'm going to use a better route planner to plan the trip. But that takes 30 seconds and it's no different to programming a sat-nav. Start here, end here. Uh, and then an option like only take me places that have at least six chargers or something like that, which increases your chance of success. If that is what counts as military precision planning for you, I really hope I'm never involved in a war that involves you doing any kind of military planning. That's all I'm going to say. And so I'm going to bring to you the real story of taking an electric car from John O'Groats to Land's End. And I know some of you are going to say, oh, well, actually, you're making it easy for yourself doing it in the Polestar 2. Well, actually, I would have thought, given the battery size, the charging performance, 
it won't be that far off journey time wise to the 120,000 pounds yeah Porsche Taycan all electric car because it charges a little bit slower but it's a bit more efficient so a similar size battery because I'm hoping it's going to be the long range single motor that Hertz will give me and so therefore I don't think it's as wild a comparison as you might think but that is what is coming up. If you want to get some live updates on this and follow me along the journey, you'll need to be following me on Twitter because the videos are going to follow after I've done it. But if you want to get some idea of how it's going, keep an eye on things, you need definitely need to follow me on Twitter and you will get the live update as it happens. And as I say, by the time you see this video, I'm probably well on my way. I am confident I'm going to show you that it's much easier than you might think. However, if it's not, if it turns out to be a massive disaster, then I'm also going to present that to you, warts and all. I'm not trying to hide anything, and I'm not wanting to sugarcoat this, so if it turns out to be as bad an experience as Lee had, then you'll get that in its full entirety, and you'll see exactly how it is, and then I'll probably have some humble pie to eat. But thank you so much for watching. Do Make sure you follow me on Twitter, make sure you subscribe to this channel, keep an eye out for those future videos, and I'll see you next time.